All right, welcome to another episode of Maddox Time. I'm Miguel Maddox, professional triathlete. And this is a little journal, I guess, of my training along with how I'm continuously thinking about getting better at the sport of triathlon. During these, I plan to go a little beyond like what I'm doing day to day, what I'm doing week to week as it relates to swimming, biking, and running, but just kind of my general thoughts, my general philosophies, um, and just general lifestyle of, uh, of what I'm what I'm doing. If you're watching this and you haven't seen the other sit-down interviews that we've done, check them out. They're in this playlist, the Maddox Time playlist. Now for some, uh, some coaching wisdom. Um, I haven't talked a lot about my new coach, Craig, um, but he's an extremely wise, experienced coach who I'm really excited to work with. Um, and he constantly, like, kind of drips me little pieces of wisdom. Um, that I wish to, to share with you all because I, I think some of it really resonates with me and is quite interesting. Um, one of his big philosophies with training is the term overcompensation. And uh, what that means in his context is really related to recovery. Um, and one day I woke up and I was like feeling really, really crappy. And I texted him and I'm like, what should I do? And he's, you know, it's like rest, like take the day, rest. And then he reminded me about this concept of overcompensation. And what that means is you you don't just want to recover to the point of being able to do your next workout, but recovery is where adaptations take place. It's where you actually improve at this sport. And it's the same in any business that you're working with, not just physical activity, but if, you're, if you want to get smarter, you exercise your brain, you do the work, and then you rest your brain. <laughs> and with training, physical training, the adaptations are very tangible and and real because you train and you can quickly overtrain or you can rest up a little bit to just do the next workout and you can keep nailing all of your workouts and then three months later you realize why am I not getting better it's probably because you're not resting to the point of like you know you're not over resting you're not resting past the point of just being able to do the next workout but overcompensation means I'm resting more than I need to basically um so when I feel like I need a rest day, it's probably a, a good signal that I need to take two rest days um, because I want to feel good the next day and then take another day to feel like I'm anxious to get back to work and I'm ready to do the work. And, um, you know, that's that's when you really start to see uh, the the big gains that everyone's talking about. Um, and it's really cool for me this year and, you know, towards the end of last year to have that uh to have that concept in mind because I am upping the volume a lot. Um, I'm training more hours than I ever have because I have more time and my schedule is basically every day is a, is a big day. Um, and if that's the case, it's like, you know, you, you train hard for three days and then you take a day off and you, you take more days off so you can hit that overcompensation. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. It's something to keep in mind as you're training through the winter months and especially as you approach racing. If you want to get better, you have to you have to overcompensate the rest in order to uh, to keep improving. Um, I have more coaching wisdom that I want to share, but I'll save that for for other episodes. <laughs> it's also free of charge coaching. Yeah, right. You don't need to pay a coach if you have me sitting here talking about my coaching. <laughs> and then the last thing I want to talk about is just kind of uh, the breakthroughs that I've made in my mental training. Obviously, I've had more time over the last few weeks to, you know, focus on what my mind is doing more than my body. Um, as we, you know, very quickly went from training 30 hours a week to 10 hours a week. Um, and as I've mentioned in the past, I see a sports psychologist. So all of these things are very top of mind. Um, but I actually had some breakthroughs on a day last weekend um, where I wasn't chatting with, with Jim Taylor. Um, but I did end up debriefing with him about what I was thinking about. But I turned on a Grateful Dead show, as a lot of you know. Um, that's my music of choice. Jenna sometimes likes it. Most of the time, <laughs> just puts up with it. Um, but we put on a Grateful Dead show. Actually, a Dead & Co. show, so the, the band led by John Mayer. I basically just sat in the apartment watching this stream of, a, of the Dead show. Um, and I've heard all of these songs, like, you know, hundreds of times and know the lyrics to most of them and everything. Um, 
But this time I was like really paying attention to what they were singing and, and it kind of hit me differently in a lot of ways. And during the, this, the last few weeks of this kind of like more focus on mental training in order to get through the, the, the shoulder issue, um, I've tried to kind of lean into new perspectives and allow myself to like free my mind of like what I've taken for granted in the past or like have been kind of reluctant to consider in the past, but I've, I've more or less tried to lean into it. Um, and one of the things that hit me during this show was how a constant theme throughout each song um, was this idea of like freestyle versus perfection. And these are two words that I talked with Jim Taylor about the following week. But a lot of the lessons that I was writing down, actually, I had my notebook and I'm like, oh, there's a thought. And I wrote it down, had um, meaning in that like uh, in that spectrum of like freestyle versus perfection. And what I mean by that is there are people that are perfectionists, right? They need to do things by the book. They, if they have a structured workout, they need to hit all of their intervals at the exact time. And then there are people that are the opposite that are like, I'm going to go on an outdoor bike ride and like kind of ignore structure, but I'll get him what I need to and and all of that. That's the idea as it relates to training, but it could be related to anything. Um, and one of the things that I noticed about myself is that I, my soul deep down is very freestyle. Um, I like to do things freely. I like to improvise and I actually get better when I allow myself to improvise but over the last year or two, um, I've really started to feel the pressure of being perfect at everything. And um, I think that a lot of that came from my past coaching, which involved a lot of structure, which is where I, how I ended up here today, as good as I am today. But um, in order to get better at something, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and I think if I continue to live and to train in this like perfectionist mode, um, I'm gonna start to see uh, myself burn out, which I already have. At the end of last year, I was very burned out on the sport. And I think that had a lot to do with, you know, the, the idea of perfection clashing against my personality to be like, you know, Im improvisational and, uh, and freestyle. I wanna read some Grateful Dead lyrics really quick because this is kind of the, this was the moment of my epiphany last weekend, and it comes from the song Terrapin Station, which is always, a, it's, it's a really important song in my life. And the lyrics, here go, the storyteller job His job is to shed light and not to master. And when I heard those lyrics last weekend, I felt like the tension in my body kind of like unweighted itself. Um, I realized that I, at that moment, I've been like fighting to be this master and to show off my mastery to the world when in fact I, I need to enjoy things. I need to take things as they are because I don't have a choice in the outcome of how I perform. Um, the storyteller has no choice. Uh, and my job is, you know, I have to look at it as I, I am shedding light on what I'm doing and I'm not like, I'm, I'm not going to be a perfect no one's going to be perfect it's unattainable so the best we can do is you know you give it your all you put in the effort and you shed light on what you're doing which i interpret as kind of like you know i want to continue to always be curious i want to never want to stop learning and um in the context of what we're doing right now like sharing my wisdom you know my my learning i guess sharing my learning uh along the way which you know I think I do a pretty decent job of, but it, it, I also, to this point, have really looked at it as like, how do I share like what I'm really good at, um, which isn't healthy. The idea of being perfect versus being freestyle is something I want to keep focusing on and leaning into where, where I truly am and not like fighting where, what I am and trying to be something that I'm not. Um, I guess it's been a couple weeks since we've done one of these, so um, updates over the last couple weeks of what I've been up to. I fell off my bike uh, about seven weeks ago now. The healing process of my shoulder is actually getting a lot better and a lot more comfortable, and I'm starting to find a little bit of a rhythm in my day-to-day. -day. Um, there are still days where I wake up and feel like my shoulder feels worse than the day before, 
usually I know when I'm overdoing it, when I do something new and different, um, I'm kind of guessing, like, we'll see how my shoulder feels tomorrow. Um, but for the most part, those days where I'm trying something new have been more consistently uh, fine <laughs> uh, the next day. I started running again. Per the doctor's orders, I started out basically doing uh, 30 or 40 minutes with five minutes of running followed by 10 minutes of walking. So that like one to two ratio, waiting a couple days to see how my body and my shoulder react to that, everything was fine. So I progressed to a one to one ratio where it's like 10 minutes running, 10 minutes walking. And yesterday I did my first 30 minute run and I did it with Jenna. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Jenna. Yay. Um, so, and everything feels fine today, uh, which means um, next week I'll probably be back to, you know, starting to build more volume into the run, knowing that like my shoulder is fine with it, fine with the impact and the jostling. Um, what we were worried about is like the, the little fragments of bone in my shoulder that are not completely healed to be like shaken up and maybe displaced a little bit. But um, I think we know, we have a good idea that that's, that's not happening. Um, so I'm happy about that. The other update, I guess, before I started running was I was able to do indoor biking and put both hands on the handlebars. So I took off the sling and was able to just rest my hands on the handlebars on my road bike. That was exciting. <laughs> as exciting as it could possibly be doing a two hour bike ride indoors. Um, and then today was the first day I had a three hour indoor bike ride. I did it on my TT bike and I did the majority of it in time trial position. So on my elbows, you know, basically putting a little more weight and a little more internal rotation into my shoulders and it felt totally fine. I wouldn't do it if there was discomfort or unusual pain. Um, but again, it's like, it's all a gamble and we'll see how I react tomorrow. But, um, uh, you know, for the most part, I think like I'm getting more and more confident doing these things and getting range of motion back. I haven't started strength training. That's all going to happen next week. Um, tomorrow I have my, uh, my seven week post-op appointment where I'm going to get more imaging to see how my scapula is recovering, see how my collarbone is recovering. So that should be a, a very telling visit and pretty much the final, like, let's see how it healed, uh, kind of look at things. I can't be an idiot, but if things are good, then I should be able to like start progressing into strength and more, you know, actual like mobility training and everything. So, um, and then PT, a couple days after that, starting PT at uh, Ultra Health Physical Therapy, our favorite place to get physical therapy. Our favorite Biased. place. Yeah. <laughs> Unbiased. My parents own it. But again, I'm like, I'm really excited about how everything is progressing, um, trying not to get carried away because that leads to overdoing it and then like, you know, waking up the next day and not feeling good. Um, I started to wear my whoop again um, just to get some data and my day-to-day -day recovery because I noticed that like, you know, the other day when I woke up, my shoulder was feeling really sore and, and, you know, uncomfortable and my recovery score was quite low. So I want to keep an eye on that. I want to keep an eye on basically just holding myself accountable to, to good recovery because I know that's going to lead to faster healing and fewer setbacks. Um, and it's probably something I should be doing anyways without a shoulder injury but um we announced our rise on sponsorship uh really excited about that um other sponsors for this year include quintana Roo again vision fsa um precision fuel and hydration they're another new sponsor but we're really stoked to work with them their team is amazing they're always uh, a blast and a half at events so um can't wait to hang out with them more and create some more content with them um, and then we, uh, Cask and Koo, um, and Wahoo are a couple supporters, um, which we're, we're excited to work with on a more formal basis. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for the updates. I feel like I've talked a lot in this one. Yeah, I think that's it. If you haven't listened to a Grateful Dead show, check it out. Take notes. Do a puzzle alert. Go to school. Okay, bye. All right. Adios. You just love to chat. I'm going to talk about 
Craig, Coaching Wisdom, and uh, and a Grateful Dead song. I'm going to have Grateful Dead lyrics in every segment, you I just decided. Start the show with a Grateful Dead With a Grateful Dead lyric. Okay, done. <laughs> you ask for it, I'll deliver. Okay.